Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. I thought I would do a review video comparing the two vlogging cameras that I have used ever since I started my channel here on YouTube. I haven't had my channel for a long time. I believe I started it back in early 2019. So it's only been two years, a little over two years. I am more of a smaller channel. I do vlog here and there, but I mainly do like sit down videos where I'll just prop up my camera and film, do lash reviews, things of that nature. Nothing fancy, no crazy lights or anything like that. Just my camera and me. So it's very important to me that the camera that I'm using has everything it is that I'm looking for in a camera. It will vary person to person depending on what you're gonna be using it for. But if you're like me and you use it for vlogging or just filming videos without like the crazy lights and you're just relying on the camera in general, then maybe you'll enjoy this review and find it helpful. When I first started my channel, I did use my iPhone the quality and the sound is definitely not there and it wasn't even this iphone it was like the older i think it was the seven i want to say maybe it was even the six seven i don't remember but that's how i started my youtube and then shortly after that i got the canon g7x mark two the mark three wasn't even out yet and that is the camera i have been using up until the beginning of this year or maybe it was december 2020 when i got the sony zv1 so in today's video i wanted to review the differences between the two i am filming on my canon g7x mark ii mainly because i wanted to have this on hand and hold it as i'm talking to the camera so i am filming on my canon g7x mark ii but i will be inserting clips that i recorded on my sony zv1 within this video as well so you guys can see the difference as i talk through them i have a handful of things already written down in my notes section right here on my iPhone just so that I don't forget so obviously the two main things is that they are both vlogging cameras these cameras were kind of created for the vlogger in mind at least that's how I see it they both have that flip tilt screen right here the Canon screen flips upward there are some Sony's that flip upward as well but the ZV-1 flips to the side let me show you guys in the phone reflection so you can see what I'm talking about this one flips upward like so and this one flips to the side. They are very similar in terms of specs, like the dimension, weight, things like that. They are very similar. In this video, I'm not going to be going down through like the nitty gritty technical details. There are some wonderful details out there to get to know your camera better when it comes to like the focus modes and just all the really cool things that the camera has. I'm just gonna talk about things that I have noticed between the two from a very basic like YouTuber perspective essentially that is basically it they are both bluetooth wi-fi compatible so if i want to send a photo from the camera directly to my phone you just have to download the app for the canon there's a canon app for the sony there's a sony app and you can directly download photos and videos from the camera to your phone so that's a really cool option i do actually use that option and i like it so they both do have that option and they both have the battery on the bottom so one thing that i noticed is that a lot of people do not like that the battery is on the bottom i'm going to show you guys why in a little bit since we're talking about the battery so i have my tripod little handheld tripod already screwed in and these two work in the same way the screw for the tripod I'm not sure exactly what like the technical name is is right here near the battery and the battery flips open and that's where it holds the battery as well as the SD card and when you have the tripod in the screw and you're recording you don't have access to the battery or the memory card so if you are if you want to change your battery or you want to change your memory card as you're recording that's just not really something that you can do unless you unscrew the tripod and do it that way both of them are the same way but I did buy a base plate for my zone Sony ZV-1 and I'm sure they have it for the Canon I just haven't looked into it and the plate basically looks like this the screw is right here in the middle as you can tell and once you screw it in, I'm not going to screw it in right now, you have all these different holes right here where you it can insert a tripod or whatever it is that you want to insert while still having access to the battery and the memory card. It's not screwed in right now, so it's not flipping open, but once you screw it in correctly, it just flips right open, that making it so much easier. And this particular base plate right here that I got did come with like a side piece there are just so many great add-ons in my opinion when it comes to cameras and i do feel like the sony definitely has much better add-ons than the canon i haven't looked into the canon too much but so far from the short research that i've done it does seem that way obviously the biggest difference between the two is the price the sony i got for 7.99 right now it is on sale at best buy for 7.49 750 dollars for the canon when i personally bought it two years ago it was about i think it was like 6.49 right now you can buy it on average i would say it costs like 500 dollars 4.99 it could be less it can be more depending on 
a handful of different factors but for the most part i would say it's probably like 500 dollars now mainly because they came out with a g7x mark ii so usually when they come out same with like iphones they'll come out with the newer iphone the other one kind of decreases in price so i feel like the same thing happened here i have already mentioned the screen the lcd screen this one flips to the side that one flips upward the only thing that i have noticed when i'm doing like sit down videos and i'm using my little tripod right here this tripod doesn't have a lot of weight to it the tripod that i'm using right now for my canon is one of those like really long massive huge tripods the ones that you don't they're not handheld tripods so whenever i'm using this and i have it on the tabletop because the screen tilts this way the weight distribution is off because now the screen right here adds weight to this side so my camera has fallen over as I'm filming a handful of times so that was something that I wanted to point out because you do want your camera to be level when you're filming but at the same time any I've noticed that any extra weight right here in my camera would fall over um, granted my tripod is a very lightweight so it's not exactly the best thing obviously it's gonna make a difference depending on what tripod you use but if you're doing a lot of like sit down videos with one of these things then that might be an issue that you run into but I'm hoping that this plate right here with this added grip because this grip piece right here does have some extra weight to it i'm hoping that kind of like balances the weight out so that's going to get rid of that issue it's not a big deal but it's just something that i noticed and just wanted to point out i'm trying to like go through all the different things that i noticed between the two cameras also the sony has a cold shoe attachment right here so this little guy right here up top the canon has horrible focusing issues that's one of the reasons why i decided to get a new Sony camera just takes forever. It has a cold shoe attachment right here. You just slide this plastic piece out and this is your cold shoe attachment right here. And once again, we are out of focus. The Sony does come with like this rabbit muff of sorts and it's basically to reduce wind noise. So the microphone is right here. This is a three capsule mic. So it's great when you're recording forwards or backwards. And then this little guy right here just pops right on top and it's meant to reduce the wind noise. So if I'm filming outside and it's windy, hopefully that should help with the wind noise. I have not tried it yet, so I can't speak for how well it works, but it seems like a great concept. You could also use this cold shoe mount for a handful of different things. I have this light right here from Ulanzi that I got off of Amazon. You basically slide it right in screw it in so it doesn't go anywhere and you have yourself like a mini camera setup which is which i think is really cool the sony not the sony the canon does not have that feature so i do feel like the sony definitely has way more add-ons and just neat things that you can do to it versus the canon g7x mark ii this one you does not have a microphone port this one does so if i wanted to add an external mic i could i'll just put it in the cold shoe mount and then plug it in right here the G7X Mark II does not have that option, but I do believe the G7X Mark III does. Another difference is the focal length. They both start at 24 millimeters, which is pretty close if you're used to filming a wide angle. This one is not as wide. It does have um, a lens that you can attach, but once you attach it, it's there to stay. And I think this one goes down to like 18 millimeters, but they both start at 24 millimeters. This one goes up to 70 millimeters, and the Canon goes up to 100 millimeters. So the Canon definitely has a better zoom in feature so when I'm doing my lash videos a lot of times if I want to really zoom in then I'm going to use my Canon because that one just does a really good job with zooming into like the nitty gritty tiny details let me show you guys right now so I had to turn it off in order to get it to focus but this is like ridiculously up close and personal I'm going to go ahead right now and zoom in on the Sony so you guys can see I'm going to insert a clip from the Sony this is 24 millimeters from the Sony and then this is as far as it goes. I'm gonna keep going and going and going. And it stops right there. That is as close as it gets. So compared to what you guys just saw, that is definitely a massive difference. So if you really wanna get up close, the Sony doesn't get up close more than that. I haven't looked into if they have other lens attachments that you could possibly add on, but I did find this one, which is like a wide angle lens. That's probably the only one that I've found so far. But if you're buying a stock, this is the focal length right here. Another big difference I would say is the focus in general. So one of my biggest things with the Canon is that I do a lot of like product showcase videos so i will do like lash videos and i'll be like hey guys so this is the glue that i'm going to be using and right now i actually focused pretty well but usually it will just take a while 
and sometimes I would have to like tap the screen to focus it, sometimes it wouldn't work, so I'd have to turn off recording and do it manually myself and then continue recording. So it's just like a lot of effort on my part to try to get it to focus. It does have good focus, it's not that bad, especially if you have it in auto, but there have been a lot of times where I had a lot of frustrating moments with the focus in general. I do believe the G7X Mark II had focus issues and then they updated the software. From what I heard or read online, I'm not 100% sure. So I started looking into a new camera and that's when I came across the Sony ZV-1 and that is literally the main reason that I got it. I went to Best Buy, I checked it out, fell in love with the Focus and that is all that I needed to know. So this is me filming on the Sony ZV-1 and the focus on this thing is just, it's insane. Like it is so quick, it is super quick. That is the main reason that I purchased it. You could just, it just, changes really quick. Obviously there are settings that you can do to make it not be so quick because let's say you talk with your hands a lot, a lot of times it will like focus on your hand mid mid conversation while you're talking with your hands. So you can make it slower if you wanted to and there's also a product showcase button here on the back. It's basically the delete button and it has like the C2 on the bottom and it, I just think it's a great option especially if you're like me and you're constantly doing videos where you're showcasing different products and things like that while you are filming a video. So that is one of the main things that I love about the Sony. While I'm filming on the Sony I want to show you guys the difference in I guess how it looks while you're filming so there is obviously a difference and this camera does have a filter option the Canon has an ND filter which it's not exactly like a beauty filter or anything like that but this one does have a beauty filter and it has three different settings it has like low medium and high let me see if I can find it so the beauty filter soft skin effect they call it this is low so this is with nothing on at all sorry I'm trying to look at the screen while I do this this is low let me get closer actually off you can like really see everything and then this is low kind of filters everything low medium and high i mean this is like really filtered i have watched a few youtube videos where people use the sony and they kind of have like this effect right here it's like a very skin smoothing beauty effect so this is medium this is high i do feel like this is way too much and then this is low I'm gonna turn it off right now. I don't use it because when you are using it, a lot of times if you move your face, kind of like a real filter on Instagram, the filter will move as well. Definitely makes your skin look a lot smoother. It's a really cool thing to have. And then this camera also has a background defocus mode right here up top. It is right there in the corner. So right now the background defocus mode is off, kind of like what would happen if you had a higher f-stop. And then if you click on the background defocus, it blurs the background a little bit. So it's just like a really cool option that is accessible up top, easy to access. I I do think the Sony has a lot of great things going on for it. There are some great videos that you can watch online to get to know it better because there's definitely a ton. But let me go back to the filming on the Canon. The color tones from the Canon are so much cooler. If you can hear anything in the background, those are like my kids, they're like playing. A few other differences is the position of the record button. The Sony has it right on top. I feel like a lot of cameras have it on top, but then also a lot of cameras have it on the back. I don't mind it either way, but if you are switching back and forth between the two or if you have a preference, I just thought I would point that out. So the Sony has it on top, the Canon has it on the back, Another difference I noticed is the audio. So when I do my lash videos, I kind of go back and forth between the two and I definitely notice a huge difference in audio. I do feel like the Sony is a little bit softer. I mentioned earlier that the Sony has a three capsule mic, three directional mic, so it's supposed to be great from whether you're filming from here or from here, but I definitely noticed a difference in the audio. They're both not horrible, but I do feel like the Sony was a little bit quieter. The quality is not bad, it's good quality, but I do feel like it was more kind of, it was a little bit quieter. The Sony does have an option for an external, external mic. I actually have one in my drawer up there. You just plug it in, put it into the cold shoe mount right here, and you have yourself an external mic, whichever one you wanna use. Amazon has a handful of great options. Another thing I noticed is the playback. So the Canon, I'll hit the playback button, and it is just like, boom, done. It comes right up, it is super quick and responsive. On the Sony, it is not as responsive. A lot of times it takes a little bit to load, like I have to wait like three, four seconds for the screen to come up and respond to the playback. It's not like a game changer, it's not a, it's not a big deal, but it is something that I personally noticed, maybe it's just my camera, but between using the two, that is something that stood out to me. And also the battery life. This was a big thing for me. So the battery life on the Sony, in my opinion, just definitely sucks it only came with one battery right here the Canon obviously only came with one battery as well and it did not come with like a wall charger of any sort it only came in with a USB you plug it into the USB right here 
and then you plug it into the wall i believe you should be able to use it while it's charging but it did not come with one of these so this one came with the canon you plug it into the wall put your battery in here and you're able to charge your battery the reason why i prefer this is because i like to buy extra batteries and that's what i did right here with the sony i ended up buying extra batteries and a battery charger right here because while i'm charging those batteries or let's say i was charging an extra canon battery i can use my camera with the fully charged battery if i am charging my camera while it's plugged in i feel like you are definitely a lot more limited than as if you had a backup charger like this. So I'm surprised that for $799, $800, the Sony did not come with something like this and you have to buy it separately. That was a little bit disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. And the battery life in general, I'll film one video and then after that my battery is, and my videos are not that long. I would say the filming lasts maybe two videos max. After that, I have to constantly charge it. And this is like a fairly new camera. I just recently got it in the beginning of the year. The Canon battery definitely lasts longer for me. I have uh, generic batteries, which you probably shouldn't use, as well as the one that actually came with the Canon, and both of those just last a lot longer than the one that came with the Sony. So that was a little bit disappointing, and it can be frustrating because I film several times a week, and I feel like I'm just constantly having to charge the Sony versus the Canon. But I did buy backup batteries. I bought three of these off of Amazon, so you do have that option. But I mean, for $7.99, that was kind of a little bit of a disappointment, just thought I would point that out. That's the end of my list. I feel like I covered everything that I wanted to cover. This might have been a bit of a longer video, but I wanted to share my thoughts from the perspective of someone that just uses the camera for you know, vlogging purposes and filming day-to-day -day videos, product reviews and things like that. Just thought I would share the main differences that I personally noticed. So if you're in the market looking for a camera, I do think the Canon is a great camera. It's a great bang for your buck, especially if you're just, if you're just looking to vlog and and you're doing like trips and things like that and just everyday life I do think the Canon is a great camera for me personally I do a lot of like product showcase videos like I mentioned so the focus was a bit it was a bit frustrating so that's why I got the Sony and I absolutely love it and I do think hands down the Sony has much better add-ons and things that you could add on to it to kind of make it look like a much more expensive camera I have this lens right here that I'm gonna attach I'm gonna do a video uh, hopefully soon to kind of show all the different attachments that the Sony has. You can add a lens, you can add a microphone, you can make this look like a fairly expensive camera if you want it to. I do think the Canon is a bit more, it's a bit more simple. Kind of like what you see is what you get versus a Sony, you can definitely customize it. Canon is kind of like the iPhone, what you get is what you get, there's not much customizing. I have an iPhone myself and it's easy to use, it's great, love it. And the Sony is kind of more of like I would say Samsung Galaxy. I feel like a lot more people, I have never had one, but they always say that it's like much more customizable, those kind of things. That's my final review. I guess at the end of the day, it just depends on what you're looking for as a person, but those are my thoughts. I hope they were helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in future videos.